So I'm just thought I'd tell you a bit about my story about my addiction and where it took me to and how it started. So I'd like to go to Trafalgar Flats, but obviously that's not there anymore. Um, that's where I grew up. That's where all my families were. Um, and it was a really close knit community and stuff. But there was a lot of like perverts on there, and it, it would it were a dangerous place to live. Um, so from then. Um, we relocated to Aki Road and I lived on Scott's Terrace um, behind the spa, if you remember that. And I used to come down these subways and um, used to see people using, you know, and I used to think to myself, I'll never do that, you know, I'll never be, I'll never, never use like that and stuff, you know. And, but, you know, and I thought I'd never, I'd never start using drugs or anything like that, you know. But when I was younger, there was always something different about me. I tried to fit in with different people, different groups, and stuff like that. But never, never felt like I belonged. I always felt different. Um, so my behaviour started changing, um, and I developed bulimia. Um, it was just my way of coping with things, you know. And it, just like a drug, that's what bulimia is. It helps me deal with life and life terms. Um, yeah. So around the age of eight, I started with the bulimia and then the, the drink and the drugs came in after that. I used to hang around down here. There's like, if you go down there, there's a canal and there's like some slopes there. And there were always like people, needles about, stuff like that, you know. And I used to go hanging around down there playing and, um, you know, the thought of drugs start coming into my, into my thoughts then, you know. So when I was 11, um, I had my first drink and the feeling that I got from that, it took everything away. It took all, all my pains, all my worries. Um, I'd been through some stuff in childhood um, and that was a way I, de I dealt with it. Um, so then on the drugs, uh, I first started with the drink, it started progressing, um, I had my daughter, I left my partner who I'd been with for many years and I really couldn't deal with it and the alcohol got worse and I became an alcoholic. Um, I then went to rehab um, for six months and managed to stay clean for two years. Um, but then something happened in my personal life that I don't want to go into and I picked up. Um, and since then I've struggled again and my drug, drug use and kind of drug that I've used has just progressed. So just even being around this area now just brings back so many memories from childhood and like how, how, what kind of child I was and how different I was, do you know? I used to wish that like, my, drug, my, my dad would be a drug dealer and do you know, my friends, I used to think, I won't name anybody, but my friends who I used to hang around with, their, their dads were drug dealers. And I used to wish that my dad were, you know, I just had something different in me and I couldn't wait to try drugs. Um, so yeah. So the area around here now has totally changed. There's beautiful houses, but it just wasn't like that. It was just run down. It was poverty struck, do you know? I remember like everybody just trying to get by, just trying to help each other out, beans on toast, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and there was an house up here um, that brings back a lot of that unhappy memories. And I, and I do believe that that was um, the beginning of all my issues. Thankfully, it's been knocked down now. So that's a bit of closure around this area. Um, Aki Road, where I was using amphetamines, uh, ecstasy, just all the party drugs, just trying to fit in with different people and still always feeling like I didn't belong. When I got to the age of 30, I'd done rehabs, I'd done, I'd done re um, community-based recovery, I tried absolutely everything. Um, and I got to the age of 30-year-old and tried to take my life and ended up on a life support machine for five days. Um, I just had enough, I just did not know a way out and I couldn't deal with my head all the time. I needed something to keep, to keep these thoughts away and, and that's drugs or drink and that kills me so I can't do that. 
So yeah, I got to my rock bottom was when I was on that life support machine and I woke up and I could hear them beeping noises and it made me realise that no, I don't want to die. I've got a daughter who needs me and I, and I, I need to do something, I need to change. This is where the change happened. Um, I moved over to Accrington and I went to Inspire and I did uh, the DEEP program um, with James Downey. It was absolutely amazing, but it wasn't enough for me. Do you know, after that I had to go into rehab. But then I came back to Accrington and that's when my re recovery began. Um, I went into supported accommodation. Um, I was tested weekly um, and I got like nine, nine months clean and then I struggled again and relapsed. Um, but then, you know, I keep trying. I don't give up. I just keep trying because I know that recovery has got a lot to offer. And I don't want to live in that pain anymore. Do you know, I don't, it, it's not like, it's not just, it's not just the drugs, it's, it's the mental health. You know, if the drugs don't kill me, the mental health will. And with any of the programme, what that gives me is freedom from all that, do you know? So I just got to keep trying. Um, but the coppice up here, this is where I come and I connect to God and I connect to nature and all my, all my thoughts just clear. Um, I've met so many friends in Accrington and there's lots of meetings. Um, I've met, you know, friendships that I'll have for life. Um, I'm close by to my sponsor, who's now like my sister, you know. Um, I've, got, I've got people that think like me who I belong with, do you know, I actually found my belonging in Accrington. Um, it's not been easy, I'm not going to lie, I've, you know, I'm a serial relapser, so they say, but I like to say a serial trier, you know, I relapse and I get back up and I try again. I've just recently been to detox, um, I'm now 15 days clean off methadone, I can see everything brighter, I'm thinking a lot more clearer, do you know. Um, I need to stay away from men as well because men's a bad thing for me, you know, that takes me back to drugs, it takes me back to my eating disorder, so I just need to be on my own um, and that's, that's where I found my place, my safe place is in Accrington. Yeah, so now I've got a smile on my face, you know, I've got plans for my future, um, I live in my own flat, That my daughter's got her own room, she's got security you know, that she never had before. We, our relationship and our bond has just grown so much. Um, my plan for the future is to help other people who are suffering and to do work in recovery. Work in bulimia, do you know, everything that I've been through, I want to help other girls who are suffering because I know that people are out there suffering and they, they, they just don't talk about it. This is the reason why I'm doing this because, you know, it is possible, you can get through it. You've just got to keep trying.